Kids, are you ready for Build this week? We're going to do a Bible story. We're going to praise and worship God. And we're even going to go through a bunch of lessons. We're just going to have so much fun. So I can't wait to get started. You guys going to come along? Come on, let's go. Hi, friends. I hope that you are ready and excited for this week's Bible story because I am ready and excited to share it. This month, we're focusing on harvest time. And this week, our theme is are you reaping in the right field? For our story today, we're going to go to the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus shares a parable of the wedding feast. Do you know what a parable is? So a parable is like a made up story that helps us understand something that God is trying to teach us, something He wants us to learn. Jesus taught a lot of parables. So let's begin our story. There once was a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. Imagine the most amazing party that you've ever seen. Yummy food, decorations, dessert, music, everything. When the food was prepared, the decorations were up, everything was perfect and in its place, the king said to his servants, go out and notify all of the invited guests that it's time to come. Well. The first one was like, oh my gosh, is that today? Like, I have so many TikTok videos to do, I can't possibly come. And then the next one was like, today? Well, that's not for me. I have far too many important things to do. I can't possibly go to a party today. Then the next one said, well, I'm fixing to milk my cows today. It's not a good day for me. And finally, another one just said, you yeah, know, I don't want to go. And on and on it went like this. They all refused to come. As you can imagine, the king was not very pleased, but he wanted to give them another chance. So he sent out other servants to say, the feast is prepared, everything is ready, come. This time, many of the guests just ignored the servants. Others insulted them and beat them up. And finally, some of his invited guests were killed by the servant messengers. The king was pretty furious. So furious, he sent an entire army out to destroy those who had harmed his servants and all of their towns. Then he said to his servants, the feast is ready, but those who are invited are not worthy. Go out in the street and invite everyone you see, everyone. So they all went out and they brought everyone they could find, good and bad alike, to the banquet and the banquet hall was full. Now in her message later, Miss Linda is going to really explain what this parable means to all of us. But for now, let me just say that Jesus is trying to teach us here that God, the King, invites us all to have a relationship with His Son, Jesus. Salvation is a free gift to all of us and all of us have the opportunity to share that, to share Jesus and invite others to come to know Jesus. But there are some who maybe aren't ready to hear about that yet. And so they might ignore us and they might not listen to what we have to say. However, there are others, probably the ones we least expect, who are ready and who will receive Jesus into their lives. Isn't it exciting to think that God wants to use you to introduce His Son to people? I know that's really exciting for me. I love the thought that I might be able to be the one who says to somebody, hey, let me talk to you about Jesus, and then they receive the invitation of Jesus in their life. I think that's pretty cool. I hope you do too. Now, let's get ready to worship Jesus and thank Him for inviting all of us to be a part of His life. Ooh that was a wonderful Bible story. But we're not over yet. We're about to get our praise and worship on, so y'all better get up and get your hands up and praise the Lord.
That was a wonderful praise and worship. Now it's time to settle down. Now let's settle down, sit down, pick up your Bible, open it up, because we're going to dig in, all the way in, in God's Word. Amen? Hi, guys. We have been having a wonderful service so far today. We heard a great Bible story from Miss Jenny Lind, if you remember. She talked about being invited to a big party, right? Well, that's what our lesson today is gonna to be all about. You see, our theme for this whole month actually is called It's Harvest Time. And I think last week you learned about what it is to harvest, right? what it means to harvest when a farmer plants seeds and and grows crops right and then he picks those crops and he's able to eat them that's harvest time right that is what this whole month's theme is all about about harvesting but today we're talking about a question really and the question is are you harvesting in the right field well Thinking about the story that Miss Jenny Lynn told us about, right? She said that there were people that received an invitation. And I think about it like um, a wedding invitation. Well, you may know my daughter actually got married this year and we did invitations and people RSVP'd to the invitation. You might say, what is that? We'll talk about that in a minute. What does it mean to RSVP? But sometimes people will get an invitation. They'll even say that they're coming and then they decide not to show up. That's what happened in our Bible story, right? Uh, sometimes when we share even an invitation with people to get to know Christ, sometimes they don't accept our invitation, just like the people in that story. And Miss Jenny Lynn talked a little bit about that. And sometimes that can get discouraging to us. And we might even get upset about that and feel bad and feel like maybe they're just rejecting us. But in those cases, don't think of it as rejection. Think of it like this. When you plant a crop, when a, when a farmer sows a seed, he has to wait until that seed is good and ready before he can pick it and harvest it, right? Sometimes when we plant a seed into a person's heart, a seed meaning like a seed of the word, sharing our faith with somebody, we need to wait until that person's heart is good and ready. And the only one who really knows if a person's heart is good and ready is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will talk to our hearts and he will lead us to share our seeds, to share our faith with people who are ready. And sometimes those people, the people who are good and ready, are maybe people that are totally unexpected. Somebody we wouldn't think. We might be thinking about, oh, I wanna share my faith with my neighbor, my friend that I play with every day. And we should. We, we learned last week about making ex excuses and procrastinating, and we learned that we cannot do that, right? But sometimes there may be people in our lives that we're not even thinking about sharing the gospel with. And those might be the very ones who are ready to hear. But see, we need to be ready to hear too, ready to hear when the Holy Spirit is speaking to our hearts and saying, go share with that person because that one is ready to hear the gospel. So they need to be ready and we need to be ready. As a matter of fact, our verse for today goes right along with that. It's from Matthew eleven fifteen, 15, and it says, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. See, I need to have ears to hear so that I can listen when the Holy Spirit is leading me. And then when I share the gospel with somebody, they need to have ears to hear. Not everybody's gonna be ready but that doesn't mean I shouldn't share the gospel. It means that I need to be listening so that I am looking for a harvest in the right field. You know what? Maybe my neighbor's not ready for me to, to share, or maybe, maybe my, my neighbor's not ready to hear and accept what I have to say. That's okay. What should I do in that case? 
I can continue to pray for that person. I can continue to shine my light, but they just might not be ready for the harvest yet. So am I harvesting? Am I reaping in the right field? I might be going after them and after them and I just need, to, I need them to get saved and they're just not ready. And there's somebody right over here, maybe my other neighbor on the other side that just is ready. They have a heart that's soft toward the Lord and God is just waiting for me, waiting for you to go and share the gospel with them. Are you harvesting? Are you reaping in the right field? This seems like a really good time to go over our memory verse for this month. So we introduced this verse last week to you and it's from John 4:35. It says, do not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, Jesus talking, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are all ready white for harvest. The harvest is out there. It's ready, but we just need to know which field we're supposed to be harvesting. Now, have any of you ever received an invitation, especially an invitation that has an RSVP? Those are the really, the big invitations. You know, those are the ones that we have to respond to to let the person know if we're coming or not. And usually it might be like a wedding invitation or maybe a graduation party. And often on those big invitations, those really important ones, it'll say something like RSVP. Now I don't actually know what those letters stand for, but I know what it means. To RSVP means I'm gonna call that person that invited me and I'm gonna let them know, yes, I'll be there or no, I can't make it. It's very rude to call somebody and say you're gonna be there and then not show up. Because as soon as you say you're gonna go, they have to pay for your spot at that party or at that wedding feast. And so if you don't show up, then that's bad, you know, then, then uh, you know, those people have paid for nothing. So with a wedding, if I say no to a wedding, that says to them, oh, now I can invite somebody else. I'll invite somebody else. And that's kind of what happened in our story, right? Well, um, if you remember from last week, and we mentioned this before, that we should never make excuses or procrastinate when God gives us an opportunity to share our faith, right? But we also have to understand that while we should never make excuses and we should not procrastinate, we also have to be led by the Holy Spirit because our timing has to be right in order to bring in the harvest. So there's another verse in the book of Mark called Mark, it, it's in Mark chapter four, verses 26 to 29. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground and night and day, while he's asleep or awake, the seed starts to sprout and grow, but he doesn't understand how it happens. The earth produces the crops on its own. First a leaf blade pushes through, then the heads of wheat, and finally comes the harvest. And when the grain is ready, the farmer comes he, and he harvests it with a sickle for the harvest time has come. You see, it's our job to sow those seeds in the ground. It's God's job to make them grow. My job is to sow the seed, God makes it grow, and then it's my job again to harvest that seed and bring it in, right? So because of that, remember, God's the only one who can make that seed actually grow. Because of that, he's the only one who really knows Remember, we're really talking about harvesting people, right? For, for Christ, sharing our faith with people. So since our job is to sow those seeds, to shine our lights, to tell people about Jesus, but it's God's job to make those seeds grow, he'll know, he knows if somebody's ready or they're not ready. He's the only one really who knows. So that's why it's up to him to speak to our hearts and lead us by his spirit. He'll show us where those fields are that are ready to be harvested. So we have to have hearing ears to know when the Holy Spirit is leading us. Maybe 
you are ready. Maybe you're ready today to hear that word. And, and God speaks to my heart and says, Miss Linda, Johnny is ready right now to hear the word. If I'm not hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, I'm not listening to Holy Spirit when he's talking to me, I might never share that word with you, Johnny, or with Susie or whoever needs to hear. And then what happens? That harvest that's ready, it might, the timing isn't gonna be right and maybe it'll pass by. Remember last week we learned that if you, let the, if you don't harvest the field and you let it go too long, the crops can rot or they can freeze. Well, we have another issue too. Sometimes we can try to take that harvest in when it's too soon, right? Timing is everything. So I love grapes just like the rest of us. And I went to the grocery store this week and I bought some grapes and these are yum, yum, yum. They're perfect. Mm-mm. I wish I could just give you one. You want one here? You can have it. <laughs> They're yummy. Well. What about these? How many would like to have one of these grapes? These don't look too good, do they? Well, these came off of my grapevine in my backyard. These came from the grocery store. These were harvested when they were good and ready. But these, they are not good. And I don't know, should I try one? What do you think? Oh, I hear you, you're saying yes. All right, I'll try one. I can't even get it off the vine. Oh, there we go. Okay, are you ready? Oh, gosh. Oh, that's worse than I even thought it was going to be. It's sour. It's hard. It is not delicious at all. And you know what? I don't even think there's any vitamins in here yet. I got to have a, no a good one now to get that terrible taste out of my mouth. Mmm. What happened was... I harvested these too soon. They weren't ready. And then when I tried to eat it, well, I did eat it. It was terrible. It was sour. It was no good. But if I leave this, if I left this on the vine and waited and let it grew, grow and let it develop, it would actually end up, believe it or not, this, if it was left on the vine, will eventually look like this. And it'll taste like this too. It's the same way with souls. Not everybody's ready just yet. And if we try to pick those and harvest those souls that are not ready, they, it, it doesn't work out well for them or for the kingdom of God because they're just not ready. And that's okay because I can pray for them and I can ask the Lord to speak to their hearts and continue to bring people into their lives to share the gospel until someday they will be ready. And at that time, if I have an ear to hear, maybe the Lord will use me to go and speak to them and bring in that harvest. You see how it's so important for me to be listening to the Holy Spirit, to be led so that I am harvesting in the right field the field that's white for harvest. So don't procrastinate. Don't make excuses. If God is leading you to share your faith with somebody, don't procrastinate and don't make excuses. But also, if they're not ready to hear, don't force it. You go back home, you pray for them. You keep shining your light to them. And in the right time, when it's fully time, when the harvest is fully ready, their hearts will be ready. And those seeds that you have planted in there, they will grow. But remember, you can't make the seeds grow. All you can do is plant them. God will make it grow. And then be led by the Holy Spirit to go ahead and bring in that harvest at the right time. Just don't forget that you need to reap in the right field, the fields where the harvest is ready. And it could be somebody that you don't expect. God might have you and lead you to share with a perfect stranger. Maybe the lady at the grocery store or a teacher or somebody that you would least expect. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Don't procrastinate. 
but also make sure you're hearing the voice of God as he speaks to your heart. And you're not too young to hear the voice of God. God will speak to you. He will. All we have to do is have hearing ears to listen to what he's saying. So I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. Maybe you're ready for the harvest. Maybe you're in your own heart right now. You're saying, I feel like I need to know Jesus. I want to know him. I've heard so much about him, but my heart is burning in me. I'm ready. I want to have a relationship with God. You know what? If that's you, that means that your field is ripe for, ripe for harvest. And I'm going to pray with you right now. If you are ready to ask Jesus to come into your heart, to be a Christian, to be born again, all you have to do is pray this prayer with me. I'm going to pray and you repeat it after me, okay? But make sure when you're praying, you're praying to God and you're praying from your heart that you really mean what you're saying, okay? Ready? Oh God, I come to you in Jesus' name. Go ahead and repeat those words after me. I realize that I am a sinner. That just means that I've done things that are wrong. But Father, I thank you that you sent Jesus to die on the cross so that my sins could be forgiven. I ask you now to come into my heart, to forgive me of my sins, and to make me all new on the inside. I ask you now to be the Lord of my life, and I want to serve you. I want to be your friend for all of my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for making me born again. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it. That's how easy it is. And you know what? You can pray that very same prayer with your friends or people you know, or maybe even a stranger. Listen, be led by the Holy Spirit. He'll speak to your heart and he'll lead you to a field that's ripe for harvest if you just listen to him. God bless you. It was so wonderful being with you today. Hope to see you again next time. God bless. Whew. I don't know about you guys, but I had so much fun. I got all worked up and now we're ready to end the video. So if you guys had as much fun as I did, why don't you go tell your friends about Build and share the video. And if you want to get involved with the praise and worship or anything else, have your parents call the phone number at the bottom of the screen here. And um, can't wait to see you guys next week.